Donald Trump's fundraising turbocharged, courtesy of the New York indictment. A lot of people sending in a lot of donos. $18.8 million during the first quarter of the year. President Trump is happy about that. Joint fundraising committee, they reported this on Saturday. Campaign says it brought in nearly the same amount in the two weeks after the charges were filed against the former president. $15.4 million, underscoring just how much the charges have animated his back. In another indication that the indictment has helped Trump to grow his base, nearly a quarter of those have never given to him before. So he's also bringing in some new voters to this. And there were questions about other primary opponents. How's Ron DeSantis doing? Well, Ron DeSantis hasn't really declared yet officially, and so his numbers are a little bit more squirrely, less defined as Trump's. This figure provides a snapshot of how Trump's arrest has shaped the primary. Look at these numbers. Whether Trump's torrid fundraising pace persists we'll see. But Trump has been raising approximately $168,000 per day from January 1 until when the charges were filed against him in March, according to the figures his team provided. In the 24 hours that followed the indictment, he raised over $4 million. First quarter ended on March 31st, the day after Trump's indictment was confirmed, meaning only a small segment of his post-indictment fundraising has been captured. So there's more money to come. Been raising money in a pair of vehicles called Save America is one of the packs. 14.5 million. The campaign will also report 3.5 million spent, 13.9 million cash on hand. Now they say he's got a lot of legal battles coming up and he's raising money hand over fist. But Trump, they say, faces a formidable opponent, Governor Ron DeSantis. DeSantis has been continuing to draw large and small size donations. Filings released say that if he wanted to run, that he would have an organization with $85 million available. He's drawn seven-figure contributions from prominent conservative donors, like an options trader called Jeff Yass, John Childs, TD Ameritrade, Joe Ricketts, another pro DeSantis super PAC, $30 million. Never back down, bought 3.5 million in ads to start promoting DeSantis. Wild, it's gonna heat up real fast. Trump's campaign has been taking steps to bolster its fundraising. They brought in a woman named Meredith O'Rourke to oversee its finance efforts. And last year, Making America Great Again, a principal pro-Trump super PAC, also ended with 54 million on hand. Now there were other people running as well. Tim Scott is also exploring a presidential run. And he's got $22 million to test the waters here. Converts his Senate campaign into an exploratory committee, looking like he's gonna jump in the race. His Senate campaign had 21 million bucks. That got converted to an exploratory committee, a new filing with the FEC shows. The move allows Scott to use his leftover funds to pay for polling, consultants, travel, other expenses. Scott's 57 reelected November, gonna be his final six year term formally notified the FEC he would not be a Senate candidate next time. Yeah, his war chest does make him a formidable, formidable candidate, no doubt. First quarter, Trump had 13.9 million cash on hand, the biggest balance among declared candidates. But Scott jumps in the race already with 20, although they acknowledge that Trump is making a ton of money after the indictment. Here's the 2024 nomination tracker from Predict It. Trump in the red, DeSantis in the black. You see right after that indictment, a big split start happening. Trump starts going up, DeSantis starts going down. In fact, some people are saying that the indictment in and of itself might cause Ron DeSantis to not run because of this number, this shift, but I don't think that's going to be the case. I think Ron's going to run. I think others are going to continue to run because they're expecting more indictments to come and that eventually this will be a war of attrition. I think they think that if a Georgia indictment comes and if special counsel indictments come, that that will be enough to cut Trump's legs out from under him and set him aside as the candidate. But we have a very likely possibility of a repeat of 2016 where we have a very busy primary, tons of different candidates. Remember all of them last time? We had Rand Paul and Ted Cruz and Jeb Guacamole Bolt, Jeb, you know, and all of the different candidates up there. And Trump ran right through the middle because they split all of the anti-Trump votes. Similar thing could be happening here. Unless there's some other plan that the GOP has in place. And also remember, we could be talking about these people running to be Trump's second, right? This could be a Trump somebody maneuver. Trump Scott? Trump Vivek, 
Trump DeSantis. Before announcing he was considering a presidential run, Scott visited early voting states for what he called Faith in America listening tour. His 2022 Senate race wasn't competitive, but he still raised a ton of money. We're still waiting for Ron DeSantis to run. Nikki Haley is also putting some numbers on the board. 5.1 million for her. Ended March with 4.1 million. She's got some other donors. Bernard Marcus, Richard Kinder. Her action committees took 8.3 million first quarter, but only 5.1 million went to her. She's the former South Carolina governor. She's raising money. Spent 1.1 million April, 4.1 million in the bank, trailing 13.9 by Trump. And Scott, who's going to enter the race with 21. Vivek's got 9.4 million cash on hand. He's largely self-financing his presidential bid. And Haley got the Home Depot co-founder, Bernard Marcus, who had previously supported Trump, and Richard Kinder of Kinder Morgan, who didn't support Trump. Other big GOP leaders have supported her. Kenneth Langone, hedge fund managers, Paul Singer, Cliff Asness, fun name, and Republican mega donor Miriam Adelson in the midterm cycle. Stand for America also raised $17.5 million. A lot of money being spent. And the question is, where is it all going to go? 